What is civil society? The expression civil society is commonly used to describe a sphere of human activity that is outside or apart from the structures of states and governments and in which free individuals from voluntary associations and establish pluralistic relations based upon affinities and common interests rather than coercion. The distinction between state and civil society is an old one but can take very different and even contradictory forms. For 17th and 18th century theorists of the social contract from Thomas Hobbes to John Jacques Rousseau, the institution of civil society, is in fact equivalent to the founding of the political state. It is the institution of civil society and the state that puts an end to the war of every man against every man which, in Hobbes's famous phrase, characterizes the condition of nature. John Locke's second treatise on government provides the classic description. Men are born free, equal and independent, but they forego that natural freedom and put on the bonds of civil society when they agree to enter a commonwealth for their comfortable, safe and peaceable living one amongst the other. It is important to note that when individuals agree to enter civil society, they adopt the principle of majority rule. They are at liberty to leave civil society but doing so means living in a state of nature that leaves them free but without any defense against others. A rather different concept of civil society emerges from the Hegelian and Marxist traditions, which see it as something antithetical to the state. For Hegel, civil society is a market society in which individuals enter into infinitely complex crisscross movements of reciprocal production and exchange and in which property rights are established by legally binding contracts. The danger is that, at least from a Hegelian perspective, the divergent interests at work in civil society will transform it into an indiscriminate multitude of individuals with conflicting and irreconcilable interests. Therefore, the role of the state, defined as the embodiment of the principle of rationality, is to reconcile those divergent interests. It exists over and above civil society, and its agents or civil servants are defined as a universal class, serving the interests of society as a whole. For Hegel then, the ultimate destiny of civil society, is its absorption into the rational state. In his early writings, Marx both draws on and criticizes the Hegelian account of civil society. Lucio Coletti's introduction to the writings of the early Marx gives a good account of this stage in his thought. For Marx, who famously inverts the Hegelian schema, the constitution of the political state, and the dissolution of civil society into independent individuals are one and the same thing, but the state overcomes civil society, guarantees the property rights that promote and reproduce class divisions, and at the same time creates a class, that is, the proletariat, that exists outside civil society and, therefore, has no claims to make on it. Its vocation is to abolish all classes and to become a universal class. Marx predicts the seizure of power by the proletariat and the withering away of the state that will result from the establishment of a society based upon free associations between individuals. The most important Marxist contribution to the theory of civil society is that made by Antonio Gramsci, who argues that the state should be understood as meaning not only the apparatus of government, but also the private sphere or the complex of structures in which the battle is waged for hegemony or for cultural, and ideological domination. The superstructures of civil society are, he writes, akin to the trench systems of the First World War, and are the site for a war of positions between the conflicting classes brought into being by capitalism. For Gramsci, the state's ultimate destiny is its destruction, political society will finally be absorbed, back into civil society when the working class and its allies achieve hegemony and establish a free and self-governing society. The term civil society can also be used as a synonym for liberal democracy, seen as the best of all possible worlds. Ernest Gellner, for instance, defines civil society as being based on a plurality of institutions which place checks and balances on the state, but which are also protected by the state. According to this view, which appears to be becoming increasingly common as the perceived threat of Islamic fundamentalism grows, 
the closed societies of the Islamic world are likely to replace communism as the main threat to the civil society enjoyed by the Atlantic world.